let's pray and holy spirit we thank you so much for your presence truly lord like the song goes you don't have to come but you always do and holy spirit i want to uh, surrender myself to you anoint me afresh to share this word even as you are the author of this word i pray that you will be our teacher this morning Lord, I pray for every heart, Lord, to be good soil, ploughed and ready to receive the seed of Your Word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, so today's message is titled "Man After God's Own Heart." Uh, I could have said. person after god's own heart but since the bible says man i i wanted to keep that uh phrasing but of course what i'm sharing is for both men and women for boys and girls to be people after god's own heart and we will look at what that phrase means okay the phrase appears twice in the bible once in the once in the old testament once in the new testament in 1 samuel 13 verse 14 Samuel is speaking and this is uh, the context is that Saul has flagrantly disobeyed a clear command from God and when he's confronted he makes excuses and he doesn't want to admit what's happened anyway in that context Samuel says that if you had obeyed God you would have uh, been blessed your kingdom would have continued and in Sam- in 1 Samuel 13 verse 14 he says Samuel says tell Saul but now your kingdom will not endure the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command and then in the new testament we have uh, Paul giving a sermon and in Acts 13 verse 22 he says after removing Saul he made David their king God testified concerning him I have found David son of Jesse a man after my own heart he will do everything I want him to do So these are the two places where that phrase appears man after God's own heart and today I want to look at three ways in which we can understand this phrase uh, in in a in a sense the Hebrew is a bit vague we don't know exactly what it means but the sense of it is a man after God's own heart and there are three ways in which we can look at it and i think all three ways are so important for us and quite likely god meant all three of them okay how was david a man after god's own heart and what can we learn from that so that we can also be men and women and boys and girls after god's own heart okay firstly it means this that david was a man of god's own choosing and if you know the if you know the history if you know your bible and you know how Saul was chosen you will ask yourself well didn't god himself choose Saul there were a number of miraculous signs by which Saul was chosen to be king and that was despite Saul's own reluctance to take up the kingship and so when we when we look at that we say well didn't god wasn't Saul a man of god's choosing well not really and i'll show you why in 1 Samuel chapter 8 okay verses 4 to 8 it says so all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Rama they said to him you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways now appoint a king to lead us such as all the other nations have but when they said give us a king to lead us this displeased Samuel so he prayed to the Lord and the Lord told him Listen to all that the people are saying to you it is not you they have rejected but they have rejected me as their king as they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day forsaking me and serving other gods so they are doing to you now listen to them but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will do so the choice of a king was Israel's initiative it was not god's initiative 
it was actually a rejection of god as their king and so god uh, tells samuel to warn them of how the king would oppress them you see and despite the fact that the guidance given to i mean just like i mean kings all over the world throughout history have had this complete sovereign power over their people and that was not the case with israel the kings of israel were given such clear strictures so to speak clear guidelines that they had to function un- under and we see that throughout the bible we see places where clearly they are constrained in their power but yet he knew that the kings despite all of that would oppress the people and so he tells samuel warn them and there's a whole half a chapter of warning where samuel warns the people that if you if you get a king if you reject god as your king and you want a man as king all these things will happen to you and despite that we see in verse 19 but the people refused to listen to samuel no they said we want a king over us and this is the crucial line then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles everything that god was to them and did for them they said we want a man to do it we want a king to do it so that we will be like all the other nations around us when the very first thing they were called to be was set apart from all the other nations okay and so god gave them a king after their own heart god did not give them a king after his, his own heart they wanted a king who would who would be like the kings of the other nations so that they would be like the other nations and kings of other nations are usually uh, impressive people the greatest warrior the bravest person the strongest guy i mean the survival of the fittest is really a story of kings and kingdoms throughout history and we see that about saul that his main attribute was his physical stature 1 samuel 9 verse 2 he had a son named saul an impressive young man without equal among the israelites and in what way was he without equal a head taller than any of the others and so he was impressive to look at which was how the kings of the surrounding nations were which is which is what the people wanted and so god when choosing saul gave them somebody after their own heart somebody that they would want and we see that later in 1 samuel 16 the the very familiar story of samuel going to anoint david and even samuel hasn't understood it even samuel hasn't realized that god's heart is so different from the heart of the people because when he goes to anoint a son of jesse he doesn't know which one it says there in verse 6 one samuel chapter 16 verse 6 when they arrived samuel saw eliab who was the eldest son of jesse and said and thought surely the lord's anointed stands here before the lord but the lord said to samuel do not consider his appearance or his height which were exactly the things that that saul had going for him do not consider his appearance or his height because i have rejected him the lord does not look at things man looks at man looks at the outward appearance but the lord looks at the heart and so samuel literally was thinking that the the same way that god chose saul he is going to use the same qualification for the next person but no god is saying this time i am going to choose you see the last time even though god did the selection it's actually the people who chose because what the person who god chose was a person after their own heart the kind of person they wanted to lead them god said now i'm going to choose a person who is of my own choosing the kind of person that i want now in the in the in the, the entire bible the only time this phrase is used is twice and it's only used for david david a man after god's own heart but if that means that he was a man of god's own choosing here's the incredible news do we know that we have each one of us been specially chosen by god 
you know jesus tells the disciples you did not choose me i chose you and i appointed you to go and bear fruit okay 1 peter 2 verse 9 you are a chosen people the incredible incredible news is that each one of us has been specially chosen each one of us is a man and a woman and a boy and a girl of god's own choosing and therefore in that sense we are men and women after god's own heart the very fact that god has looked upon us and then he has chosen us to be his sons and daughters to be his ambassadors to be his witnesses to be his disciples to be his representatives in the world to be his partners in his kingdom work all of the things i'm saying are not for special people they are the identity of each and every person who believes in jesus each and every one of us here listening here is a man and woman after god's own heart because we have been chosen by god you know and we need to receive that we need to receive that identity there are so many things that come in the way of accepting that identity okay because we know ourselves better than anyone else and we know that god knows us just as well though actually god knows us even better than we know ourselves how 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 could god possibly choose and yet he has and that's the first thing i want us to recognize that to be a man or woman after god's own heart is to be a man or woman of god's own choosing and he has chosen each and every one of us to be his sons and daughters and all that comes with being a son and daughter of the living god we are a chosen people each of us is a chosen person and today i want us to be able to receive that and accept that no matter how uh, difficult it seems how outrageous it seems how impossible it seems to be able to receive that identity the second meaning of that word a man after god's own heart is really the most common one it's a man who will obey god okay and that's what comes out here uh, in both the references the first one is in the negative Samuel tells Saul that the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart because you have not kept the Lord's command the implication being that a man after God's own heart will keep the Lord's command and when when uh, Paul is talking in the New Testament he says it in the positive way he will do everything i want him to do and so the most common understanding of this phrase is that a man or woman after God's own heart is one who will obey God Okay. We see that about David. I'll just read one wonderful verse. It's one Kings chapter fifteen and verse five. One Kings chapter fifteen verse five. For David had done what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and had not failed to keep any of the Lord's commands all the days of his life. except in the case of uriah the hittite isn't that amazing it's i think it's amazing that the writer of kings puts in that phrase except in the case of uriah the hittite you know in in ancient times uh records were scrubbed they were whitewashed so that all the bad things were removed and only the glorious things were recorded so for example even to this day many scholars say the the exodus cannot have happened because there are no egyptian records why would they be it was the most humiliating experience of the of the egyptian kingdoms it's very likely that they just scrubbed it all out wanted to forget all about it they didn't want to keep a record of how this god of slaves completely wrecked the superpower of the middle east 
and in fact you know the the whole notion that the jews invented the exodus what a history to invent that they were slaves for 400 years you know in fact you can trust the history of the jews because all the warts are there david was is there is and was the greatest king and yet you have the recorder saying here except in the case of uriah the hittite and of course that entire story is given in graphic detail but that was the point he he did what was right in the eyes of the lord and he had not failed to keep any of the lord's commands he was a man who would obey god in fact we see his obedience to the written word the bible that he had at that time okay the psalms are full of david's love for the word of god a very good example is psalm 119 which is the longest psalm and it's a love letter about god's word and it was most likely written by david but there are other psalms other places where it's so clear how much david loved god's word and wanted to follow it we see david asking god for his guidance time and again even in battle even after he's won a battle in a certain way been successful the next time he goes into battle he will ask god all over again god what do i do now okay whether it was what we call the logos word the written word or what we call the rema word god's spoken word david was always seeking god's commands and then doing what god said it's a constant refrain in the history of the kings if a king was good it was because he did what david did if a king was bad it was because he didn't do what david did let me t- show you just give you one example or two rather they just come at one chapter after the other so in 2 chronicles chapter 28 we have ahaz king of judah and it says in verse 2 verse 1 unlike david his father by father it means ancestor unlike david his father he did not do what was right in the eyes of the lord and the very next chapter you have the next king hezekiah verse 2 he did what was right in the eyes of the lord just as his father david had done okay so the second uh, characteristic shall be see a meaning of this phrase a man after god's own heart is a man who will obey god and therefore for us you know god has done his part he has chosen us he has done the thing that we consider we would consider far more difficult far more outrageous far more amazing and extravagant but our part is will we choose to obey god will we choose to be men and women after god's own heart which means wanting to do what he says which means both looking at the bible the written word and saying lord i want to follow this word as best as i can but it also means seeking his guidance for his his daily guidance for for big and small issues his rema word his specific guidance to us in so many areas of our lives whether it's the job that you do the career that you have the the person that you marry the the church that you attend the gifts that you use whatever it is okay the difference that you make in the world there will be this specific way in which god will speak to us will you be willing to will you be choosing to obey god and when we do that we are men and women after god's own heart and the third wonderful meaning of this word is a man seeking after god's heart seeking after running after desiring god's heart okay and really Uh, in all of the bible this was a very unique attribute of david uh, of course there were others who had that same heart but we see something so special and unique about david in his desire for god and his seeking after god and clearly this desire was stirred in the pastures as he took care of his sheep as he wrote the psalms as he sang his songs drawing closer and closer to god expressed in his worship we see that in his psalms we see that in the fact that you know when he played the harp for king saul the presence of god would come and saul's heart which was troubled by evil spirits would be calmed and come to peace because of the presence of god that came when david played his harp okay and so we see that we see we see this aspect of david his tenderness towards god his desire for god 
in fact it's not just we, we think of it as something tender but even the david and goliath story okay it's a story of war but it happened because david knew god's heart okay i'll just show you i'll share this the example of that is actually the first evidence we have of something that david does we know that he's a man after god's own heart because samuel is told to anoint him but the first evidence we have that david knows god's heart or has this close connection with god's heart is in the david and goliath story okay and as goliath comes day after day and makes his challenge to the people of israel to the army of israel look at verse uh, 25 chapter 17 1 samuel 17 verse 25 now the israelites had been saying do you see how this man comes keeps coming out he comes out to defy israel the king will give great wealth to the man who kills him he will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his father's family from taxes in israel david asked the men standing near him what will be done for the man who kills his philistine and removes this disgrace from israel who is this uncircumcised philistine that he should defy the armies of the living god look at the difference in the understanding of what was happening for the israelites this man goliath was defying israel but for david he was defying the armies of the living god david was able to sense god's heart that goliath is defying him defying his army defying his people not just any ordinary people and actually when you when you read that what will be done for the man david is not asking the question david is actually saying what are you guys up to how can you be thinking of what you will get as a reward can you not see the disgrace this man is bringing upon israel upon god's people that that's his heart because he can sense god's heart in this matter okay he was a man who sought after god's heart we see this in the psalms i want to read two verses to you the very famous verse that we've been basing a lot of our worship on psalm 27 verse 4 one thing i ask of the lord this is what i seek that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the lord and to seek him in his temple one thing i ask one thing that's all david wanted psalm 63 verse 1 o oh god you are my god earnestly i seek you my soul thirsts for you my body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water you know and bill johnson makes the point he says that there is a a place that we come to where just as our bodies thirst for water our souls are seeking after god but he says it goes even further he says our, our bodies also start to get start to manifest that desire for god there's such a desire such a seeking after god and i was just thinking about you know my favorite psalm is psalm 42 which is not written by david which says that the dear pants for streams of water so my soul longs for you o god but then it struck me as i was preparing for the sermon that even the sons of korah they were discipled in worship under david they were chosen by david no wonder they shared his heart no wonder that the person who said as the dear pants for streams of water i mean he was reflecting the heart of david who said earnestly my god i seek for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water or one thing i ask of you that i may dwell in your house gaze upon your beauty and seek you and so we see david seeking after god with all of his heart we see david passionate for god seeking to please him so many wonderful pictures no which are iconic david dancing with abandon before the ark not at all bothered about how he looks whether to his wife or to his servant girls or to the rest of the rest of his people you know the contrast is with how how uh, solemn we have made clergy you know especially in the traditional church we've made clergy so solemn with all of the trappings and of course that was there in the ironic priesthood but what a comparison to david 
who took off his royal robes and put on the cloth of a worshipper okay. dancing before the ark setting a special place for the ark which means for god's presence in jerusalem he wanted god's presence near him he desired to build the temple he couldn't bear to see the the presence of god in a tent he he, he wanted to build a temple and when god said you won't do it your son will do it he made all the all the arrangements and the bible says with his own finances all the arrangements as much as possible for the temple to be made and solomon had to just come and do it okay. when you when you think of a man seeking after god's heart with david consider his response not just to god's blessings but to god's judgment and god's punishment okay. because of his sin with bathsheba and what he did to uriah her husband you know when nathan came and rebuked david what did david say it's, it's 2 samuel chapter 12 david said then david said to nathan it's verse 13 i have sinned against the lord that's it no excuses no defense that's another manifestation of his seeking after god's heart and god judges him god punishes him and bachi ban says the son that was born to them out of their adultery would would die he would have been about 2 years old and obviously david loved him very dearly and david starts fasting and praying and pleading with god to reverse his judgment and to save his son but after a few days his son dies okay and i and i just uh, am astonished at verse 20 after his son dies so he's till then the moment his son got sick he stopped eating he was fasting and praying and he was in his in his house in his palace fasting and praying and pleading with god to keep to uh, heal his son look at verse 20 after he finds out that his son is dead that god has carried out his judgment and his punishment then david got up from the ground after he had washed put on lotions and changed his clothes he went into the house of the lord and worshiped you know whenever god revealed his heart even in judgment david responded and here we see that he is seeking after god's heart yes he tried desperately with his pleading and his fasting to change god's heart but when that didn't happen david was okay with it and he goes into the house of the lord and he worships the question we have to ask ourselves are, are we seeking god's heart do we have that desire that desperation is he our one thing is being in his presence our priority are we passionate for him are we abandoned before him do we care what other people are thinking or what god is saying how do we respond to him even in discipline even in judgment no matter what happens is he the first person that we turn to is he the one that we go to for comfort are we seeking after god's heart and wanting our hearts to be aligned with his heart you know that's one thing that i that for me all three are so important but i think that if we are seeking after god's heart if we desire him the obedience will come if we are seeking after him that obedience will come because we want to please him at one level we think how could david have done what he did with bathsheba and it seems a two year period but we do it every day and we've done it in big and small ways and the point is when god reveals his heart will we respond do we respond to the good things to the great things to the difficult things
we will do so if we are people who are seeking after his heart and so we have these three aspects that we have been chosen by god he's done it his initiative and you might say well god said i didn't choose saul but i chose david maybe i'm more a saul than a david well we were all more sauls than davids it's because of jesus that we are davids it's because of the cross that god looks at us and he doesn't see a saul but he sees a david and he says i choose you but the other two things are about us will we be those who choose to obey god will we be those who even when we fall but of course at all times are seeking after god's heart let's pray my father i thank you that you've chosen each one of us we cannot even comprehend the love and grace and mercy by which you have chosen us by which you call us your elect you call us sons and daughters you you envelop us and embrace us with your love and make us part of your family and i pray this morning lord and i pray for each one who will hear this message that we will be able to truly receive in the depths of our hearts receive that identity that reality that privilege that blessing of being men and women boys and girls after your own heart but now i pray lord that we may live in the reality of that by choosing to obey you and by seeking after your heart it's come holy spirit i pray this morning that you will do a new work in each of our hearts stir a fresh passion fresh desire and desperation stir a fresh hunger and thirst for you for your presence for your pleasure may our lives truly reflect our election as men and women after your own heart in jesus name amen